Your business needs to talk, but it also needs to know where it stands. Let's do something about it. Bizline includes a plan with unlimited one-hour local and national calls for a fixed monthly price. Bizline. One bill, no surprises. I'm delighted to welcome you to the second event in the AUT Ideologue Innovation Series. The purpose of these events is to reinforce the role of creativity and innovation in business. We don't think there's enough of it. Um, in fact, I don't know if anyone's read the wonderful book by Stephen Carden, who's a McKinsey brainiac. He's written a brilliant book. His conclusion is we don't have enough creativity, and we quite agree. Apart from a few stellar examples, and one of which we'll be hearing about tonight, we're woefully short in New Zealand of great, innovative, multinational companies, and we want more of them. So part of tonight's purpose is for Mr. Fisher and Mr. Peichel to meet whoever you are. It might be Mrs. Peichel and Mrs. Fisher. Um, but the idea really is for the genesis of great companies and great ideas to come from these events and from Ideologue in general. What, what I'd quite like to do tonight is, um, is really talk about, or starting off talking about the zero IPO process uh, because um, you know, we haven't had a chance to talk about it and uh, we think it's kind of interesting because for the first time, um, certainly in the experience uh, that we've seen, we've actually um, seen a group of people sort of move more from the technology side of things and getting that sort of background in, into more the business side and then into the corporate, corporate funding side and really uh, trying to blur now um, our technology business and all of those schools with a capital raising strategy and building a platform to really go global. And uh, I think that's kind of, kind of exciting because it's really the next step of maturity for the uh, industry that we're in and the real motivation that we have is, is uh, to share that experience and, and sort of hope that um, some other people follow our path and also learn from our mistakes. So the question essentially is why did we do an IPO and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Um, through the um, various things that we've done, if, uh, if, you, sort of look, if you sort of look back, uh, Glazier Systems was a service based business. You know, we started with um, about seven people we peeled out of Ernst & Young in, in the mid 90s uh, and essentially charging time doing bespoke software development. So, you know, it's all, a, you know, as, as most of you people would know, um, uh, those services type businesses don't, don't require a huge amount of capital. It's essentially, you know, what you can charge out, you're charging time, same as your lawyer, same as your plumber. So, uh, that was a really good experience. We learnt lots about technology. Um, but those businesses can only really get so big and, and, uh, and I'm sure most of you are in services business, it's really hard work as well. Um, but it was a, a really, really interesting experience and we were very fortunate in that um, uh, the dot-com boom happened in the, um, in the late 90s and because we were in the software development space doing um, internet websites uh, for customers, suddenly these services based businesses were sort of seen as the uh, as raw materials for this big dot-com wave and so there was a bunch of acquisitions that happened in that services space. So we were really very, very lucky um, and, and we managed to sell that business. One of the big things we, we kind of learnt about was um, interaction design, you know, designing things up front. We knew the importance of marketing and sales, we knew the importance of PR, we knew the importance of customer support and you start adding all of that up, it's actually quite a good, quite, quite a reasonable sized team. I mean we're not quite at critical mass yet, we're at, we're at about 30 people. So quite quickly your sort of um, costs get up to about 500 grand a month, you know, quite, quite fast. And, um, yeah, you know, th and this is to build what I would think is the minimal size team to take advantage of a global opportunity. It's a multidiscipline thing, that's what we're doing. It's, it's a real business. Um, so, I mean, one of the features you would have seen with Zero is the, the team that we've, we've put together. And, you know, we've gone out and got, you know, one of the best brand guys that we've found, some of the best interaction design people we've found, um, really good operational people, some good sales, you know, great sales people. And uh, it's having um, the resources to 
how to do it properly. And what's really exciting about it is we've never had the resources to do it anywhere near properly. And um, you know, now we can do it in a largely unconstrained way. So I think the interesting thing about Xero is, is what happens if, if you do allow a business from New Zealand to be successful and actually be resourced for success. And um, it's so much easier having the resources to do things properly. I mean, it still takes time. Uh, but you know, we feel like you know, we, we, we've got the opportunity and we're very grateful for the opportunity to actually do it properly. We know how to do it and you know, we don't know everything but we're learning, we're learning along the way. But you, get, you do gain experience and we can see how it works. And one of our real competitive advantages from New Zealand is that um, because our networks are much smaller you can form these multidiscipline teams. You, you, you imagine trying to put a, a team like we have uh, uh, together in Silicon Valley or in London. You just don't know that broad group of people but you, you absolutely do here. So that's kind of exciting. So what I hope will, people will sort of take away from Xero is, um, you know, let's just let's just use it as a case study and watch it for the next two or three years and see what a, what actually a properly funded business f from New Zealand looks like, because it's really really hard doing it with no cash. It's compromised the whole way through, um, and and so that's what we're doing. We think we're probably you know the first organisations that's actually done the funding bit first, and now we can just focus on on trying to be successful. And that's exciting.